Welcome back to the Tide Your Room Hanger. This is Mike, and I'm coming at you with the weekly news and review for August 30th, 2020. 2020. A lot of great reveals in the Chug mainline. There's some stuff going on with Legends, and of course, some great masterpiece things to talk about. All this is coming up. First thing I want to talk about is some stuff that is coming in at Show Z. We got incoming on this new Scourge with a repaint. And if you pre-ordered it when I first talked about it, it was 160. Now that it's coming in stock, it's 170. And if you go to check out uh, the last couple things I checked out with, I was able to click additional box somewhere in the shipping to not charge any additional shipping. But it says it takes up to 45 days to get to the U.S. So that's something that you got to weigh those options if you want to wait a little longer. But it's still taking a while. But that's a little trick to maybe get your shipping a little cheaper. Next up we have this Mayfex Iron Man. It's the Avengers Endgame number 136, Mark 85. And for $146 he comes with a lightning enhanced back piece, arm cannons, multiple hands, blast effects, hollow shield. Looks pretty good and around the 6 inch size. And yes, Shozi does have Fansway Sovereign in stock, the, the Sovereign M, the movie, the more recent one. But he's a pretty hefty price and it's $300. Now, I don't know how that compares to the secondary market or if, if there even are any that exist on the secondary market right now, but I don't think they have very many and I don't think they'll last too long. So I wanna start out talking about some masterpiece reveals and we already knew Starscream was coming. Here is a picture of Starscream that was out of a magazine and here's the thing about it, it looks good. It looks pretty G1. I don't think it's bad at all, but one of the problems is it's hard to tell with the unpainted prototype. It's just so tough. So many people have been picking this part, and I kind of kind of understand. I mean, we all know it's going to be really expensive, and we expect it to be pretty darn near perfect. I think once it's got the paint on it, and we kind of see it in hand, especially the face painted, it's going to look amazing. And Takar's going to do whatever they can to of course be make toys and be the number one and th this is the mold to show how it's done but people are wondering does it have waist articulation so does it do you have the swivel are you able to move the torso around and i think they do i don't know why they wouldn't have shown that off in these pictures but i'm pretty sure you will well we'll find out Side profile, not the sleekest in the world, but not too bad. I know a lot of people like to talk about, will it have a, a big fat backpack on it? And it does have a bit of a backpack. I don't think it's too huge, but we do have a lot of the alt mode collapsing in on its back, which I'm not, a, I'm not against it. I don't think that that's the worst way to go. I think it's clean enough, but then again, everyone has their own different preferences for this. So I'm guessing he's going to come with this stand. Uh, they don't always include a stand, so if we get a stand, that's awesome. Next up, we've got the Mastermind Creations reformatted R47 Exodus, the MTMTE getaway. And this is the robot mode for this figure. I know that MMC is he's getting out of G1 a bit. They've always kind of dabbled in some of these other designs and this thing looks pretty cool and here is the alt mode so uh, I don't know much about price or availability on it but well the pictures are showing up now so there they are so it looks like DX9 is going to go through all of their figures for their Minasaur and start a G2 one and this starts making me wonder will fans toys do the same thing and I kind of expect they might they might. I don't know 100% if they will, but they might. But this is this one with DX9 looks good. I think DX9 set is turning out to be a really good set. It surprised me because I wrote it off in the earlier part of this whole Minasaur war and debate, and it's turning out that these figures they're putting out are excellent. They're Minasaur. You can already have a Minasaur on the shelf missing an arm right now, so they're doing pretty good. I actually would have liked to have known this and then could have done maybe one company's do the G1, another one do the 
G2, and then and then maybe X Transbots be the toy version. That would have been cool if we would have known all this before and done it, done your purchases based on uh, which type of set for each company you want to go for. But anyway, this is what it looks like in the alt mode. Does look pretty cool, pretty interesting, and I'm guessing they're gonna do them all in the G2 deco. So we got this Hongli PF01 Red Falcon in. This is a Star Scream, and I'm, I'm guessing turns into the bird, of course. And he looks pretty interesting. This is definitely for those Star Scream enthusiasts. I think uh, we've already had a couple of other characters made in this design. For some reason, I thought we already got a Star Scream made like this, but maybe I am wrong. Looking here, you could see the wings of the bird mode in a comparison of this Starscream to a Siege Starscream. You can get a size comparison and definitely a different aesthetic they're going for. So we've got some pictures of Flames Toys of the Kurakari Kuri Victory Leo and it's something that we knew was going to eventually come and I think it looks good. This is a companion piece for your Star Saber and yes looks super high end the paint looks amazing just all of the little detail on this looks awesome and of course it doesn't transform so you could have a whole lot more going on with it just for the one mode if it doesn't transform but even though it doesn't transform it does combine now i think that it's awesome that they were able to make this combine because that's that's what happened in the the g1 and so you would expect that to happen here. That is awesome. It looks good. Uh, it's not the same type of combination I would have expecting, but the way they did it, I think they worked it very well. And if you're in on this, if you're in for this thing, I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be $400. Uh, that's my belief. I might be wrong. I haven't seen a price anywhere. So if they're each 400, you got 800 bucks standing there. So getting into some Legends news here, we have got some pictures of the New Age Soundwave. This thing looks great, and the paint, I knew what they were going to do. I knew New Age was going to do an excellent paint job, because they always do. Their tape cassettes, they look like tape cassettes for the most part. They get the smaller shape, fit in the chest fine, and so there are some pluses to this set. You're also going to get it in a plethora of colors. You're going to get the uh, the Sound Blaster in a recolor there. You're going to get a gold one. You're going to get a clear one. You're going to get just all the different colors in the rainbow. But here you can see it comes. this one comes with a Rap Bat. And, uh, and you're going to get Frenzy and Buzzsaw. And I believe with the Sound Wave, you're going to get the Ravage Rumble and Laser Beak. Now looking at these cassettes, this is something that always interests me. I think Magic Square wins in the cassette department. Now, we don't have one-to-one, -one, side by side uh, pictures of these yet, but just from what I see, they win in the cassette robot modes, so I guess is what the best way to call it. But I think New Age wins in the cassette cassette mode, but it depends on what you care about, but I'm going to display all mine looking as like the little robots, not in their cassette forms. Okay, so you knew I had to do it. Magic Square on the left, New Age on the right, and just as I called it, the Magic Square aesthetic, I think it looks better still. The paint in some areas is better on New Age. If you have them both in hand, it's hard to tell, but looking at, this is the comic version of the Magic Square on the left, and the extra paint that they put on it does make it pop quite a bit, but it makes it a bit darker and I do prefer the lighter blue, so it's kind of your preference to... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get both and check them out and compare them with each other and just see which one I actually like better. I'm thinking that uh, the Magic Square is just a little bit bigger. It's like a quarter of an inch taller. And when you're looking at Legends figures, that quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch makes a difference. Did somebody say Soundwave? Well, yes, we have Soundwave coming for the Earthrise or for Cybertron and here is a look at this. Now a couple things you want to look at. First of all, the bot mode looked off to me a little bit. Like I, I, the Siege one was good but not Super G1. This is Super G1 but a little bit off 
and I finally figured out what it was. It's the chest. They widened the chest to make it a better cassette player to look more like a cassette player in alt mode without having to fold eight other panels to do that. So that's the reason why the chest is so wide and it's, it's a little bit off compared to what I would, would expect. So here's why I say that if you put it side by side next to the Siege, you can see the Siege has a, a slimmer chest and a better overall profile. But I do like the G1-ness of the Earthrise. So it's a win-win or a lose-lose, however you look at it. But it's still pretty cool. I'm glad they did it. I'm glad they went that route. But I might, in the end, like the Siege one better. And so I guess that makes me wrong from when I said, hey, I'm going to wait and not get a Siege and get the Earthrise instead. Let's check him out in the packaging here. And it looks good. So there he is in his packaging with two cassettes for, I believe this set's going to run 40 bucks. I, I think it is. Uh, 30 for Soundwave, 10 for the two cassettes, which is what they sold for anyway. And the cassettes are going to look more G1 than the other release. So you're getting something special here. And we also got pictures of an in package of Optimus Prime. And so if this is 40 also, it's going to be $10 less than the one with the trailer. But you're not going to get the trailer. But I'm looking at this and, and versus the one that I have. Uh, mine's got the blue on the chest for the windshield and this is white on the windshield and i'm sure if i look close i would find a lot more differences between the two uh, but I, i'm gonna admit i like this optimus prime this version of optimus prime is a pretty good version of optimus prime who wants to play a game of what's in the box what's in the box well we found out what's in the box spoilers for anyone i don't know if this really is a spoiler spoilers aside I don't know if it's spoiled anything whatsoever, but let's look at what's in the box. We've got some excellent pictures of Earthrise smokescreen, and this figure looks good. And I've said it before, and I'm probably going to say it again. But it looks near Masterpiece level from the front and the sides. It just looks that good. I knew that the mold that they used before for the Siege was good. But I, they've made some improvements. It looks even better. I like the way this looks. So I'm definitely going to have to pick this guy up, of course. And, and not only does he look good in bot mode, looks super clean in bot mode. He also looks good in his alt mode. And that looks great. And just kind of what you would have wanted in G1, and, and I feel like I say this over and over with Earthrise and, and a lot with Siege, that this is what we wanted back in the day, and we're finally getting it now. Okay, so we've got the Takara Tomy Mall exclusive Generation Select Super Megatron with the packaging, and this guy here looks way different than a lot of things that we've seen, but I see a lot of Galvatron in this. There are a lot of components, especially the lower legs so much Galvatron in this figure uh, that's pretty interesting but I mean I guess not surprising but the figure does look pretty cool and if this is something that you're in for then definitely pick it up so we've got an Amazon exclusive two-pack it's the Warfare Cybertron Galactic Odyssey collection and this is a good looking version of Ratchet and I always feel like Ratchet looks better than Ironhide, even though I don't think the chest is done just right, and the lower legs are a lot like the Siege, but overall, it looks pretty good. And of course, with the Medic here, uh, this, this another remold or reuse of the Alita 1 and the RC mold, so she looks pretty good too. And I feel like this color scheme fits her very well, and I do like this better than what they're doing with the other mold of the Fembots, with the Chromie and all that, uh, this this does look better than that Fembot mold. So together, it's a great set, 40 bucks. I mean, separately, they'd have been 20 each anyway, so not a bad price either. Looking at these alt modes, the alt modes look great. Uh, I do like it, and of, of course, I can see the inspiration in Ratchet. I can see that, that it has a lot of the 
siege in this Earthrise, but it does look really G1, and I like that. So we're going to talk quickly about Beast Wars, but first I'm going to talk about Warpath. Yesterday I made a video talking about Beast Wars and, and the Kingdom and all of those, and I didn't talk about this Warpath because I want to talk about it today. I think it looks excellent. It's really hard to think fourth dimensionally on a half transformed figure thrown down here. Once it's fully transformed, it's going to look good in both modes. It, you can already tell how clean it's going to be in bot mode. You can tell how clean it's going to be in alt mode. I just don't know with two of them there, why did they not just take time to transform both of them? And you could see both modes. But anyway, it's it's going to be a great looking figure. I, I really... And looking forward to this in the main line as a $20 figure, and it's just going to look great. I mean, it it's going to be better than the Final Victory, which, I mean, I know a lot of people didn't like Final Victory, but that's where I'm at with it. I did make a video yesterday talking about all the Beast Wars releases in the Kingdom, and which is the third pillar of the Siege, then Earthrise, then Kingdom. And so here's Cheetor. I think he looks pretty good. Cheetor in his alt mode the alt mode looks pretty good also so i think that they're going the right direction heading in the right route black and arachnia also looks pretty good and i do like that it looks like we have some posable uh spider legs in there so that's gonna work so great looking figure look at that head skull rat trap rat trap rat trap he looks good but he's a bit small compared to the 35th anniversary. And I think a lot of people are gonna be kind of upset about how small he is, but he's only 10 bucks, so it's not the end of the world. And his mouse mode looks pretty good too. Yeah, rat mode, I know. But it looks more like a mouse than a rat. Wow, who knows? If you wanna know more about other possible future releases and a list of the ones I'd like to see made, then you can check out my video that I put up yesterday. So we're getting a Black Ricci for the Generation Selects, and this looks good. This will be a companion piece for a Black Zarek, and that's the thing. I'm really starting to think they're going to repaint repaint Scorponok into a Black Zarek, which is a great idea, uh, and I'm, I don't see why they wouldn't. And the fact that they're giving this to us makes us think that there should be a second Scorponok coming with a new redeco. No, no one's talked about that yet, but that would just kind of be a gut feeling of mine and I don't know why Hasbro would leave that kind of money on the table anyway look at this figure here he is a remold of the fast tracks he does look good and it's not a remold it's a recolor I love this color scheme and it looks like it's paint but it's not I'm pretty sure it's just all that that gold plastic but it could be like the feet are plastic and then some of the other other has paint like the legs and the arms and the torso is painted that could be a possibility I think there's a review floating around out there. I need to find time to watch that review. Here it is in its alt mode. Looks good. I just love the color scheme. I just think it is is great. I might I might skip fast tracks and just grab this one. But anyway, I'm just kidding. That this is nice. I think it's cool. I like that they give us stuff like this. That's a companion piece. Something that you might not get otherwise. Here he is as a weapon, and and yes, it, it does sort of kind of have to get taken all apart and then rebuilt back together as a so as a massive parts former. But that's just kind of how these sets go and how these figures work, and it's just something that we live with. I don't have a problem with it, and and this is just so interesting and unique. This thing is massive. This thing is is like three quarters the size or length of Scorponok himself. It's just it's huge. It's hard to tell in the picture. So before we get into Star Wars news, I do want to talk about this G1 reissue of Blaster. And he's showing up in the U.S. In fact, I saw him in my hometown. And I picked him up, and it's pretty lightweight. And I really thought it would have a little more weight behind it, a little more heft behind it. I mean, I do have my own G1, but in the box and all the packaging, I just thought it would be heavier than that. But it is only going to be $30. I think it's the most reasonably priced G1 reissue that they've put out. Since the mini bots, the $8 mini bots, I think were a great value. I think this is a great value. Some of the other ones might not be as great of a value. So if you're in the market for this, pick one up. We have some news on the Star Wars Galaxy's Edge trading post. These are some 
small droids, the BB-8 figures, there's some uh, R2 units in there, and this looks pretty cool. It's, if you're into all these different colored variations of droids, I like droids, but I, I don't know if I want to go this far in all the different colors, but it's kind of fun. I think they're like 13 bucks a piece. Uh, that's the price I saw on something else that was like an unpainted version. So, I don't know if this holds to these, but anyway, they're pretty cool, figured I'd share. So next up we've got this Cad Bane, which is going to be an exclusive overseas, I think in the UK, and then eventually it's going to come released over here, but I think he does look cool, it's a good looking figure, it definitely reminds me of what he looked like in the show, and so, yeah, this packaging's cool too, definitely unique and different, he comes with this little droid, and a, a couple of guns of his. So a pretty uh, interesting character that they had in the show and it's cool that they're making them in the six inch scale. Speaking of the six inch Black Series scale, we're hearing a rumor that Jar Jar is going to be a deluxe figure. So he's not only going to be made into Black Series, but he's gonna cost more. So it's a strange turn of events that this character that everybody hated is now a coveted more expensive character expensive figure i know in the vintage collection one was sought after the price kind of went up and now people are looking forward to this one so quite interesting but it's going to cost more because deluxe costs more usually at least ten dollars more kind of like we recently saw with zeb so moving on up to the hot toys Scale. This thing is awesome. Ahsoka Tano for the Hot Toys. She looks good. It's going to be, of course, the 12 inch scale. The, the They call it the 1 6 scale. And they know how to make a figure. They know how to make a figure look like it walked off the screen, out of the movie, out of the show. I like the way it looks. I'm not in on Hot Toys. That's too rich for my blood, but. Those that are, are really going to love this figure. So we got some in-hand pictures of the Commander Pyre, 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 whatever. Anyway, I like the gold look to it. That's kind of slick. And the packaging's a bit different and not a lot different. And not all the way to the new style of packaging. So it's still pretty cool how they're doing it. Now I did see firsthand the new Stormtrooper and I didn't pick them up. But I'm hearing the new Stormtrooper is going to have a lot more articulation. It's going to be better articulated and all that stuff. So that's a completely different topic, a different story. But this looks cool. And I'm wondering if this has the same level of articulation as the new Stormtrooper. So it looks like we've got a couple more figures coming. And there's a mystery about these Target exclusives. The so one's going to be called the Holiday Trooper. And so, yeah, I don't know what that is or how that's gonna look but that's kind of interesting and the next one is called Mando Berry and again everyone's guess is as good as mine or mine's probably not as good as everyone else's but we just know there's more coming there's more coming down the pipelines I'm not sure why there's all the secrecy and stuff but when you scan uh, figures they're always called something strange in the system and if you scan a Ghostbusters figure randomly some crazy name comes up with them too at the Walmart so I don't really know why they got these code names and maybe it's just they don't want anything to leak out that would spoil a story there's no story you can spoil here or with Ghostbusters let me know what you think about this week's weekly news and review what other awesome stuff is going on out there that I did not know about I'd like to hear it like subscribe to Deerham Hanger out